Hello and welcome to David Skidmore Art. Today we'll be drawing this lovely lion. If you'd like to draw along with the video, the following packs are available to purchase. Pack 1 containing the reference photos, hot press paper with grit, practice paper and drawing information sheet. Or pack 2 with all of these plus 4 pencils 2H, HB, 2B and 4B, detail eraser, blender and a pencil sharpener. Details of the packs can be found on my YouTube channel or on my website www.davidskidmoreart.co.uk The drawing. So I've completed the grid and I've also numbered the grid squares. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to 13 and the same down the side. And I've put corresponding numbers on the grid on the photo just to help me out. Like I said, I've used a 2H pencil to create the grid and I want and you keep the number keep the numbers quite light as well because all this needs to be able to be erased uh, after we've uh, drawn the line in. Um, so not too much pressure. Doesn't matter so much on this one because um, we're just going to throw that one away when we're finished. Right, so before we start drawing, there's a little exercise I want us to do, um, which is very uh, important with regard to the lines that we're going to put on next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another piece of paper. There's another piece of... Um, Fabriano and I'm just going to tape that up here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my 2H pencil, 2H pencil and I'm going to create a tone. So I'm going to use most of the side of the pencil and I want it to run it 45 degrees and I want to hold the pencil well back so I'm not putting too much pressure on the point so lightly on the pencil and and keeping a nice straight line not not getting into a curve what we're going to do is we're just going to lightly put a tone on and we're going to take our time doing this we don't want any gaps between the lines that we put on for the tone and this one's to be a really light tone so not much pressure just covering the paper with the pencil and I want you to practice this so you can do this consistently so it's just a nice even tone then when we've done that what I want us to do is do exactly the same 90 degrees so for to our original uh, hatch lines and just go across and do the same. So you you need to practice this to be able to do this consistently. So, and what we are going to do, we're going to do some more work. When we actually put this on the drawing, we'll do some more work with this, with the blender. Now the reason I've got you to do that now is because any lines that we're going to draw, I'm just going to put that to one side. Any lines that we're going to draw on here, we need to, need to be darker than that hatching because we're going to hatch all of it or shade all of it. So that shading that I've done over there, this shading here, any lines that we put on our drawing, they don't need to be, we don't want to bear on too hard, we don't want to ingrain into the paper. We just need to make sure that, that when we, that when we put a line, On our paper it's going to stand out against that so we put that to one side <clears throat> and we'll make sure that any lines that we put on here are darker than that but we're still using 2H pencil we're still not putting a lot of pressure on we're still going to hold the pencil back here and we're going to try and we're going to draw bearing that in mind 
Right, so I'm going to move this back a bit so you can see both. Now, you might not be able to see my drawing too well. I'll try and zoom in um, to show you what's going on. So this is our reference photo. What we want to do is pick up... It's, the first thing we want to do is try and put some easy lines in, if you like, that make it easy for us. So the first easy line, I think, is this one here. You can see that there's a line that goes all the way through there. Ignore the ear. It's a line that pretty much straightish line that goes all the way through there. And we can put that in just as a starting point. So you can see this line here. Here. It's going to more or less run halfway through that. Uh, square in the grid so that's a good starting point so, so that is there is if you look at the number four here and come across it's halfway between four and five on the grid I just go out a bit there so come across four halfway between four and five so we can come over here halfway between four and five and across four I'm just going to put a little light mark there and this runs all the way up to here so if we look at where it crosses through here which is like a nice convenient point so on line number nine on our grid and pretty much halfway just over halfway up between two and three it crosses through there so if we come over to our grid and we come down number nine and half just over halfway up between two and three we've got that line we could we could sketch in now a straight line just lightly sketch it in start with that runs up there So what we've done, we've put in this there. And it's given us a really good starting point. And then another, from that point now, we know we can continue that up a little bit because it does continue up. And it continues up to about halfway through that square. So if we come over here to halfway between that square, and we look that it comes down sort of below halfway so it comes to so we can start to put a line down here and that line curves around a bit but almost goes to this point here so you can put that in <clears throat> we can put a bit of a curve on the top and straight away we've got that much in so we know where the line is going to sit uh, within that frame. Then we can also look and say from this point here, there's another line that comes down here for two squares and it's probably a quarter of the way through this square, line number six. So we've come across line number six between 11 and 12, about a quarter. And we put that line in just light lines I'm putting at the moment, just some we've got that side of his face in I'm just going to zoom in here again so conveniently here the top of his his eyebrow here falls conveniently right on the junction of number 11 and number 6 and then if you look at the corresponding point here that's probably just over halfway up on number 9 between 5 and 6 let's come back over here we know we said his eye starts there So our brow starts there and we said 
it goes across two squares and it's just over halfway. So if I put a line in there now, a light line in there, what we've got now is we've got a line that takes us across there so we know where his eyes are. What we've got here is some fairly simple lines and we're starting to build up saying well is that in the right place with relationship to all these other things. If we look at the ear it's it's sort of just over halfway between on on grid line two across here between eight and nine and then it sort of comes down and if you imagine so what we said is we know that the ear starts about here the junction between nine and three and it comes up here we said just before halfway so we put another, another straightish line in there and we look come come to this side there and we can see it's just past line number seven uh, on the grid and it comes up probably just over a quarter of the way through number two so we'll come across here again so like we said it's just this side of seven and we know it comes up about a quarter number seven and we can and that's a bit of curve so we can put that curve in you can see that the ear again is probably a quarter of the way up into this top grid here so what we can do we can just join that up with a curve to that point excuse me I'll just adjust the camera so we said it's going to be about a quarter of the way up this grid and then we'll just put a nice curve in that joins all that up is we can take out this bit of line here sorry use the paintbrush and then what we can do we can then put that in we'll just put that in a little bit darker because you know those lines aren't going anywhere need to do is concentrate on this head area so we can put this other area in. if we look at it touch it where, where like I said we, we use more than just the grid so where we've got this line that we've already got through here we know that just above grid line three it's going to touch that line and it goes up just above halfway on this grid line 11 put that in Like I said, here's where it's just above that line where it touches there. And it goes about halfway up here. So we know we've got a line that goes up there, quite straightish. And then also we can see that the ear comes down here, nearly vertical. And it goes halfway between 11 and 12 on this grid line three. So we can put that in. So halfway between 11 and 12 on grid line 3, we know it comes in there. We know we're just going to put a curve in there that joins those two up. And like I said, it's just off vertical. So I've put a line down there that's just off vertical. You can see it would be this here. Now, all big cats have a, in the middle of their forehead, they all have a sort of indented area. So the forehead tends to come into this and that is quite important because that gives you the centre of the forehead and also sets the direction of the head. So when we put this in, what we're going to do, we're going to say, well, we're going to put like a centre line in, if you like, of that. And we're going to say, that's pretty vertical, look there. And it's probably two thirds of the way across through these, across this grid line. And it's pretty vertical down there. So if we put that line in from six up to just over four. So we're going to put a line in here, like we just said, about two thirds of the way through there. Vertical, like that. And see so that's coming down and cutting through <clears throat> the line that we put in for where his eyes are. Okay, back to our so the next thing I think we'll put in is this nose down here. Again, I'm trying to make sure that I keep everything, you know, we've got this in, we've got this in, we'll put the nose in, we keep everything sort of relating to one another. 
and this nose is a simple line to put in and we want to put as many simple lines in to start with as we can. If we were to draw a hypothetical line up there we can see it's just over halfway come across a grid line 6 it's just over halfway between 10 and 11 up there and it comes and it stays fairly vertical down to number 8 in about the same um, and cuts through number 7 just over halfway and number 8 maybe a little bit more so we'll put that line in from just over halfway here comes just down through just over halfway here and just over halfway here and we're just going to put that in as a straight line and as you can see it's just to the just to the right of this so we've got two vertical lines this one down here this one down here or just off vertical and then what we can do we'll put this in and then that'll start to give some shape to the face so you can see this here we, we've got this point in already we can see that the that sort of the cheek or the the upper cheek here is probably a third of the way up or two thirds of the way down and crosses and touches the nose probably about two thirds of the way down past seven we're going to uh, put that in so come over here so like i said we know this comes down here we've already got that more or less in we know that it was about two thirds of the way up there and we know that it's about two thirds of the way up there so we're going to put that in we're just going to put that line in there and then we'll just put a bit of a curve in there and if i zoom out so now we've got that in we can just make these a little bit more positive so that we know where they go these are already lines that we've we've got in we're not making them too dark and we're still holding the pencil well back so that we're not putting too much pressure on so what we can do now because we've got this in we can put this eye in so we know that the eye runs just slightly to the right of this line we've put down here for his nose and sort of slightly off vertical but the other way and it just comes down here just probably oh, just fractionally below the number the number six grid line and just touches the, fo the forehead that we've got in and then up here again we can see it's probably a third of the way down from six to the bottom of the eye and then it just curves around here and joins up with uh, the line that we just put in so we'll do that so like I said we know that it it, it just comes to the right of this we know that it comes just down through here just below that line we've got in there and it curves around like I said just off the vertical just touches that and then we said we come down about a third and we put that in and so we've got that eye in really simple in the right place no real great detail at this moment in time so we've got the eye in okay we're going to come across here and we're going to put the other eye in so this eye we can see there's a nice straight line here vertical again and it's halfway come across grid line number six just about halfway between nine and ten nice vertical line there <clears throat> so we're going to put that in before we do anything else so we come across here like I said, uh, come across grid line six, halfway between that, we're just going to stick in a vertical line there. Come back here. We've already got this point in, remember we drew this line through here, so we've already got this point in here. And we know that you just, <clears throat> just dropping away from the vertical and it's going to touch through that line that we that we put in there so we're going to put that in so that is going to come over here like i said just already follows the line that we've already got in and come back over here and we can see here that probably a quarter of the way up on grid line number nine 
is where the eye touch is there and it's probably just less than a quarter here so we can put that in so a quarter up and a quarter in and we'll put his eye in come back around here so I said about a quarter in there and a quarter up here and then we're going to put a nice little curve in there <clears throat> and back over here we can see halfway so halfway between there and there is where it breaks through here and we can put that in so there we go Just zoom. so as you can see we've got the basic geometry of his around his highs and his forehead in uh, not too difficult I don't think Maybe what we'll put in now, we'll just put this in here so that we just can sort of complete this area with regard to um, simple geometry or simple lines that we're going to put on. We can see that this is pretty much at this junction of grid line number nine and grid line number four and comes down to about sort of two thirds, uh, sorry, a third of the way down from grid line number four as it goes through number eight. So we can put that in. So Grid line number nine, grid line number four, so see we start here. We know that it's about a third of the way down through eight and nine. So put that in and then we just put a nice curve in that joins the two up. And then that also then, while we're at it, it goes up to about halfway between three and four and finishes there. So now we've got that in, I think what we'll do now is we'll get this in. So we start to frame his face. So we can see this here is uh, about two, a third of the way up <clears throat> on, on grid line seven, about a third of the way up from five and about a quarter of the way in on grid line five from seven. And then it comes around here to about halfway on grid line six between six and seven and then it comes back around here to about quarter of the way uh, on grid line seven between six and seven again so it's quite a consistent little curve there comes about a third of the way through here and then it comes down to about a third of the way through there so I'm going to put all that in one go lightly sketching it in so like I said Come across grid line number five to about a third of the way past number seven it then comes down to about halfway on grid line six about a third of the way quarter of the way sorry on grid line seven it's about halfway through there and it comes down to about here so we can just quickly we can join those points up that we just put on there and what i want Although we're joining points up, I still want us to think about drawing, we still want free and lines, we still, we don't want stilted lines, we want to be going in stages, try and keep the pencil moving in, in, a, in a nice loose way. Okay, so we've got that in. While we're here, we might as well, you can see around here, there's an there's a nice line around there which <clears throat> really just defines where this darker area uh fur on the side of his face uh joins up with with his cheekbone here when we put that in it'll give us a little bit of definition so that again comes from comes from just to the side the numbers of uh, grid line seven here curves around a little bit to about a quarter of the way um it's come through grid line six and then it comes down and if you continued it it would i think so sort of touch that intersection between seven and eight so what we can do is said it's going to touch that intersection between seven and eight we know that it starts just to the side of seven here we said that it comes about a third of the way here so we can just put a curve in around there okay so that puts that in. So these are just these these are just construction lines really. The only reason 
this line is here. There are no lines in uh, in life really. So this this line we've put in here it isn't a line. It's just a, it's just to indicate to us where this darker tonal area meets this lighter tonal area, and that's the same with all the with all of what we put in really. This line we put in here is just where this lighter tone meets this darker tone here. This line we put in here is just where this lighter tone here meets this darker tone here. So all the lines that we put in are own though they won't be lines at the end of it, they'll just be they're just a guide for us that when we come to put our tones in where the different tones sit. Okay, so I think what we're putting now because we've got this in, we'll put this in here simply because it ties in with this and it and it helps us keep on this idea that we're working everything together. So this you can see just a continuation of vertical line through here. It's probably just above just above um, grid line eight, and then there's a curve here that takes probably about a, just less than a quarter of the way down on grid line seven, and then curves back up here just just less than halfway through grid line eight. So we can put that in down here. So that curve, we know it's going to curve around there. It's going to come up through here. And we know that it's going to touch there, just above grid line 8 across here, which it does. So what we're using, we're using lines that we've already got in, we're using grid lines, we're working together to make sure that proportion of everything stays in the right place. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'll finish talking you through this and then I'll scoot on a little bit <clears throat> rather than me go through everything that we're going to put in. Because the principle we're doing this we like is exactly the same as the principle of what we can do with the rest of it. So once I've talked you through this, I'll get on and put all this in and then I'll just have a refresher back and then we'll move on to the next bit. I'm sure you don't want to sit listening to me for that long. So we're going to put this in now. <clears throat> I'm going to put his nose in. If you notice his nose, and this is always the case, a couple of things I will point out. Eyes, particularly when you're looking at a tiger or a lion, sort of three quarters on or even side on, their eyes are always quite triangular. So the, the shape of the eye is always relatively triangular. And obviously the nose is always triangular. So if you try and bear that in mind, um, it makes life a lot easier. If you think that the nose is a sort of triangle, the eyes are triangles. Um, it helps you to make sure if they don't look sort of triangular, they're not right. Okay, so we're going to put the nose in. <clears throat> so if I was putting the nose in, what I would do, I would say if I join that tip of the nose up there with that tip of the nose there, look, that passes right the way through that junction point there, that intersection of grid line 8 and grid line 10. So that's this point here. And we know that it comes to about halfway cross grid line eight, about halfway between sorry between nine and ten, and just up, just under halfway up from eight. It's a point there. So grid line nine and ten, uh, just up less than halfway from eight. We know it's a point there. And here, we know that it's again about just under halfway between ten and eleven, and probably a third of the way down from number eight. So halfway between 10 and 11, throw the way down from number eight and put that line in there. That's that line across there. Now we can see just below line eight here, there's this little line across there. So we put that in just below eight. We know it's a line that comes across there. This is just, just off vertical. So if you put that in just off vertical, Obviously that joins up with that line we've just put in and starts to form that. And then we know probably halfway between there and there is a point here. So halfway between there and there we put a point in there. And that curves around. You see it's almost vertical there. Almost sorry horizontal there and comes around. So if we put a line in that goes like that. So we've more or less drawn in that part of his nose. This point here <clears throat> is 
just past halfway there and just under halfway here so just past halfway there and just under halfway there and we can see we've got this line that we've already put in here we know this comes down here and curves around so if we just bring that down here and curve it around to that point there and then this line here is almost a straight line right the way through the middle on, on grid line 10 right the way between the middle of 8 and 9 so here and we know it's going to join up with that and then if we join it up with that put a nice curve in we've got his nose so we've got his nose by using relatively simple construction to try and make sure that it's right now we know we've got this sort of point here already we know that that is we can just sort of put a little bit of curve into there and we've got his nose there so now we can put this um, sort of left hand side of his, his upper jaw in so we know it's halfway across here just past this point here in fact and it comes down to just past halfway there just touches here and we can see it comes across here just above there and then it curves around to sort of just over halfway there so it curves around put a line down there and this sort of curves around there so straight away we've got that in and then across here look this is almost almost horizontal and again probably quarter of the way up on uh, from line nine on on the vertical nine so about a quarter of the way up and like I said and that it's almost vertical so put that across vertical it just joins up with that look and then it's probably halfway uh, between eight and nine halfway between eight and nine and it curls and it curves up to just the other side of eight where it breaks through eight here so just there so bring that down sort of join the two up okay we've got that in so now fairly quickly we've constructed all of this area so what we can put in now we can put in in this this sort of tear ducty sort of the side of his nose so we know that is just over across grid line seven just over halfway between nine and ten it's grid line seven halfway between nine and ten we know it's there so it's fairly vertical we know that that is going to join up with it And then this comes down halfway here, halfway between seven and eight to there. It's probably just under halfway up there. That's a sort of a horizontal line. And then it's got this little V bit in that takes it there. So there you go, we've got that in. <clears throat> okay so we've got the majority of the head shape in what we'll do we'll just put this bit of fur in here so that it just helps visually over there so you can see the fur is just probably two-thirds between 11 and 12 on five so two-thirds across there and we can see that it starts from a point about here which is just a third of the way and a third of the way down so about here and then we just we just sketch that in sort of not have to be too detailed and then again comes from just below five here down to about two, a third of the way there so we just sketch that in so all that's done we've just put this bit of fur where that's going to fall there Okay, so these are just sketch lines at the moment. We can refine it as we go. And when, when I say refine it, what we will start to do then, 
I start to just put in some of these areas here. So I'm just sketching in these. They don't have to be that detailed just to show us areas where the darker tones are going to be there. And by doing this, it starts to all give you a little bit more detail. Again, working down this centre line we've already put in, we can see where these fall. Okay, so that comes down just past this line here. And then we can just bring, we can see we've got this little lump here. We'll just put, just put that in. You can also put this in around here, which is like his lower, this, this lighter area around his eye. So what we're doing now, we're just starting to put some detail on the top of the simple form that we that we'd already put in. We can put this round here, so we know this this is going to come. See, so just um, at the intersection between six and nine, and it sort of comes up just the other side of here. Put that in, and then that just comes down, sort of through here. And we can put that in as a dark area. We can see that this eye, if we continue that up on that, on a bit of an angle. And then we can just sketch this in. We can see it comes sort of halfway across there. We just sketch this in so we've got an idea of where that darker area is going there. And the same here, we can put some of this in if we want. We can, we can just indicate where some of this darker area is. Now I'm not doing any shading at the moment, I'm just putting lines in that give you an idea of where the shading is going to go. Now one thing that's quite important with the big cats as well is you always get these these sort of series of, of dots. This is basically, it's, it's the follicles where all the hairs come from and they're always uniform in their direction and the spacing is usually fairly uniform and by getting those in it helps us to create the right um, shape for his uh, for this uh, upper jaw area here so if we look at this one here it's just just above the the, the junction of eight and nine so just above the junction of eight and nine here I can see it's got a, it comes down fairly sort of straight line, just curves around a bit here. So straight line, curves around a bit here, probably a third, kind of third way into there. And it's got a little bit of curve that way. So put that one in. And so this one is probably, well, this one we can see is just above halfway. So I could put that, I could put a mark in just above halfway. And then we know that this one is, is halfway between those two marks, so halfway here. And we're not putting the dots in, we're putting the line in. So we're going to put the line in and we look look where it cuts through this line here so we can see that one goes through there and then this one like we said we know it goes here it follows the same sort of line as the other ones and that curves around here so what we've got at the moment is lines where the dots are going to be and we have got this this little one here which is as you can see nearer sort of doesn't quite split the gap between there so it's nearer there than there so put that in okay and then just coming up to here we'll just put this bit of so there's a little lump in his shoulder there let's give it some shape so I'm going to put the I'm going to draw the rest of it in now, um, and then I'll I'll come back to you when I've done that, and I'll just quickly talk you through it.
Let's do, oh, sorry. Before I do that, sorry, we will just put this in. I missed this. It's right on, right on the line on grid line number nine. Comes just down below grid line number nine going across and joins up with that. So put that shape in there. You can refine these shapes a little bit as as you put more more of them in and then we've got this darker area see that curves around here we might as well put that in because it'll give us a bit of so that basically runs around there again we're just putting some lines in at the moment so that when we start to put some tone in we know where it goes okay so i'm going to uh, carry on and do a bit more detail with this um, so I'm just toying with the idea whether I put the I might put this in just before I scoot on so this obviously is the is the the, the deeper part of his ear and we'll just put that in so <clears throat> coming down grid line 8 down grid line 8 we know it's just to the other side of grid line 8 and it's probably just below halfway there and we know it comes down just above halfway just below halfway here so and we're just going to sketch this in as like a rough shape and it's got a bit of a pointy bit down here we'll put that in and then over here probably a third of the way across here and probably a third of the way down here so we're going to just join that up and again we're just going to sketch this in as, as shapes Okay, and then here, just about halfway, and nearly down to this grid line four, and that's more or less vertical up there. So again, just about halfway up there, and then we'll just put that in like that. And then this here, you can see probably about a quarter of the way up here, it curves over, and then it joins up with that. So nothing, no great detail but we've got that in and then we can just put this bit of a lining down here so okay now we've got uh the majority of that ear form in and i think we've got the main shape of the cat's head okay so i will now uh just put the rest of it in and then i'll come back to you okay so i've um finished drawing all the detail you need at this stage so what you can see I've tried to do here is I've just tried to detail all of the lines and and sort of um, references to where some of the the darker areas are I've put them on as lines at the moment because we're going to put a tone over all of this and that's just to give us some indication of, of where we need to go with our tones but all these lines should be visible after we put our tone on so they all need to be about this sort of level of of uh, darkness again if i bring this back this was our original tone you can see the original tone that we put in all these lines are darker i'd just like to say at this point so what i will be doing is putting together a pack if you would like uh to have a go at this particular one at home so you'll get so it'll have this um this reference photo so it'll have the grid and the black and white on one side and it'll have the color on the other side you'll also get a sheet of paper that's ready lined for you so all of the grid lines will be on you don't have to put the grid lines on it's ready to go um and you'll also get a photocopy of this drawing that i've done here just so that you'll have a reference as to although obviously you'll have the video um you'll also have a reference as to what lines you need to to look to get on um and then also there'll be uh some other there'll be another photocopy of when it's uh hatched in um and blended just to give you an indication of that so you'll have the the, the, the photos the the paper fabriano paper ready lined you'll have a, a sheet of practice paper 
and uh, although the sheet of practice paper will be smaller than this one, it's a sheet of practice paper they can practice on. So the second pack will have all the paperwork, it'll have four pencils, the Mono Zero eraser, uh, and a blending stump. Um, so the prices and, and details that will be on the website, I'll also put a link um, on the video. Okay, right, so we've got all this, this detail in. What do we do next? There's no one way to draw. I'm not saying that the way I'm teaching now is the right way. It's just a good way, I think, of proportionally copying from photographs. And the, and the technique, this technique is my technique. And as we go on, it's my technique. Uh, I'm not aware of anybody else that possibly uses this technique or teaches this technique. But it's the way I do it and the way I think it works. I think what I want you to do is go away with a, a drawing technique and then develop it. Uh, in your own style because that's what art should be I think you need to take a bit, a bit from here a bit from there a bit from somewhere else and then go back and do your own thing with it right another just another thing before I continue you can you can see that I haven't put so where the lion's lying, lying down and you've got sort of these the back legs here from a an artistic point of view I don't I don't think I need that in there because obviously his body's going out to nowhere and also I just don't think we need that for this uh, artistic image. Um, we just need the front of the line. The line could be the line more long ways and I think this is a bit, just a better artistic, artistic image. Right then, remembering what we did right at the beginning with this hatching here, what we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing now and we're going to do this over all of the lion all of the line. I know that there's some highlights on here, but we'll put the highlights in afterwards. That's what the Mono Zero Eraser is for. Rather than trying to decide at this point where your highlights are going to be and trying to leave them in, we'll put a tone over everything and then we'll pick the highlights out. That way we get to choose our highlights. So using the technique that we practiced before, we're going to put this tone a very light tone and an even tone we're not we're not putting any graduations into the tone at all now we're just putting a consistent tone over all of the line that we've drawn we're not going outside the line at the moment because at this point we've not decided what we're going to do with the background we might decide we want to um <clears throat> Put some tone into the background we might decide we want to put an actual background into it or we might decide we just want to leave it as plain paper but all we're doing at this moment is repeating exactly what we did when we practiced our hatching and like i said this is a very controlled hatching we're not scribbling this is as controlled as when we were drawing and we're holding the pencil right the way down here so that we can't put too much pressure on. You know, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on, but it doesn't put that much pressure on the tip of the pencil because I can't, holding the pencil all the way back here, and that's what we want. So, really controlled. And what we're looking to do, and because we're doing it all in a straight line, we're not, we're not going to curve into it, and because we're holding the pencil back here and we can't put too much pressure on, we're not getting dark lines in it. We're going a nice even tone. And as you can see, doing it this way, even though I'm doing it in stages, it's even all the way over. So we've not got any darker areas where the two tones, where the two strokes meet each other because we're not putting... Well, because we're holding the pencil that far back, it's very difficult to create a dark line. And we're using the side of the pencil. And the more, the farther we go, the more the pencil flattens in the area that we're using it. And that makes life a little bit easier because we got less of a point. So we're going all the way over this line.
Right, you're not going to want to watch me do all of this all the way over, so I'll finish that and I'll come back to it with you. And what we're then going to do when we've got all, all the way over the line hatching it that way, we're then going to do what we did before and at 90 degrees that original hatch, we're going to hatch it the other way. Now like I said what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this hatching, save you on to watch this, I'm going to sleep and I'll come back to you when I've done that. Okay so now it's all hatched in both ways or shaded um, as I showed you before. What we're going to do now we're going to take our blender, our blending stump and we're going to start to put the first um, of the basic tones in. We're not putting more pencil on it at the moment we're just going to use the pencil that we've already got on there and we'll, we'll build a little bit of pencil up on the blender which we can then start to move around as well. Um, what we're looking to do at this at this point is really create all of the basic tones but without really being over committed. As you can see where we've the fact that we've hatched all of the the lion in almost starts to give it a slightly solid feel. What this will do this will improve that, it starts to give you a 3D effect and also when you start to put your darker tones on it will give you more confidence to, to start to get a bit more punchy rather than working on a, on a white surface. So what we're going to start to do is we're just going to start with a blending stump to just blend in the pens that we've already put on. I'll just zoom in on this So you can see the blending stump already is already starting to to have an effect. Then what we can do, we've got some darker areas here. We can use the blending stump now. And we can start to pull those darker areas in. I'm just using the pencil that's already there. And also we can start to look at the direction of the fur. A little darker area there. Look at the direction of the fur and we can start to really get a bit more of a feel for what's going on all the time. Looking at, referring to our reference photo, and like I said, starting to follow the fur patterns, picking up the pencil that's already there and using it. So where we've got our lines here, we're Showing some darker areas, you can pick up on that, and we can start to pull those in a little bit more. So, what I will do, I'll zoom out to the photo again so you can see how what I'm doing is starting to replicate what's going on on the photo or the reference rather. Okay, so what we're starting to do now is we're not going to get any real punchy tones of this, but we are going to start to find where the areas of tone are. It's a really subtle way of just finding your way around the drawing. With these blending stumps, what you'll end up is, the more you use the blending stumps, you'll end up with blending stumps. They've got a lot more pencil on them. So then you can keep some of those if you like and you can use those for just filling in some of these darker areas if you want to just get a bit more tone in than you can with a fairly clean blending stump. So what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing this in look, but I'm just using the blending stump. I'm picking up the pencil we've already got there, I'm picking up the base tone that we've already got there. And this is a like I said, a really subtle way starting to get the tones in. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, mention before, which I should have, is that the eyes, don't leave the eyes white. I always, because there's a tendency for a lot of people, 
to assume that eyes are always white or the pure, or the the white of the eye is white well not many animals particularly big cats their eyes are usually a lot darker than their fur and if you leave the eyes white they tend to stare out at you so get get the eyes when you put the tone over everything else put the tone in the eyes as well and then make sure that you get those eyes filled in with the rest because that will stop the eyes staring out at you and believe me it's a lot better to get the eyes filled in than it is to leave them white okay so we're working our way through this we're looking at which direction the fur goes and we're trying to put that in with our blender we're also picking up on these areas where we've got some pencil so at the moment we're just trying to get some feeling into the into the drawing of what the tones are doing but like I said without being too committed just working away with the blender a bit like a pencil as you can see we can still see all the pencil lines because our pencil lines are dark enough to allow us to do that but then we're also working over the top of them to blend those pencil lines in so again you can work around into these darker areas with your blender just use a little bit more pressure not going to be too precise here so what we're trying to do is just get a general feel for what's going on and just lay the, the ground. It's almost like underpainting. If you imagine we were doing a painting, this is the underpainting. So she's really getting it ready. So that when we start to put the detail on top, we've got something to work on top of. As I think you can see, it's already starting to look a little bit more three-dimensional and we haven't really done that much to it with regard to detail we've just put some basic lines in we've put a, a tonal shading all the way over it and then we're just pulling this around a little bit like I said looking at which way the fur goes and you should also notice that Our grid lines are already starting to disappear in the drawing. So realistically, we should, unless we sh unless they fall into a real highlighted area, we should not start erasing those. They, they'll just disappear in. That's one reason why you want to keep your grid lines very light and ideally, a sort of a similar sort of darkness to that. first shaded tone that we put in so again here we're just working this around remember I said that all the lines that we put in generally are just defining where one tone starts and another one stops so we've got these lines here they're not really lines they're just darker they're creases in the animal's fur and they're darker they're darker areas so that's why we can get the blender in and we can shape them out a little bit stop them being such a line start making them fit in with the rest of the drawing so we've got these areas here which will be more these will be more highlighted later but like i said at this moment in time we're just gonna we won't obviously put so much pressure on the blender because we don't want them to be you know we're still looking to to get these graduations or the start of these graduations but doing it in a fairly simple way so what I've done there I've just got this little bit of fur around the outside of his sort of front leg so 
I didn't draw it in, but I've just used the blender to put a little bit of an indication of the fact that it's there. So this, you don't have to be too worried about this. You want to get it, when I say don't be worried, obviously you want to make sure it's right. But you can afford to be a little bit looser, like I said, almost like an underpainting. And what we're looking to do is get the general idea of what the tones are doing. We're not looking to be very precise with them, but we just want to try and highlight where some of these slightly darker areas are. One thing I have also done, you'll notice, is obviously the you know, on the photograph I use the front of this uh, front part of this paw was missing, so I've just uh, used a bit of artistic license to put it in. So you can do the same thing uh, if you end up buying the pack. That bit of detail will be on the pack anyway, so you can copy it off there. Otherwise, just um, Use your imagination a little bit. I mean, we are we are artists, so that's what we. That's the difference in art and a photograph. We can uh, we can use our imagination. We don't have to just reproduce exactly what is there. And when you're doing this, when you're working from a photo like this just remember this is called a reference photo and the reason it's called a reference photo is because of reference so there's no compulsion to be exact in how you um, follow it I'm never very keen on people saying here's my picture and here's the reference photo that I copied because I, I always think the reference photo once you've created your piece of work is completely irrelevant um, because you want your piece of work to stand on its own you don't you know as a piece of art you whether the reference photo is entirely that it's completely irrelevant once you've done your piece of work you're not trying to copy that you're not trying to say this is the best exact image i could make of that photograph what you're saying is this is a piece of art inspired by the photograph and this is my interpretation of the photograph Okay, so there we go. So we just, that's the basis. I'm just putting a bit more in it. So that's the basis of, of our underpainting. I'll just zoom in on that. Excuse me. Okay, so as you can see, I think this already starts to look, considering that all we've got on there are our original pencil lines, one flat tone, and then we've gone over with our blending stump and we've just blended in, we've just put in some basic tones. Now I think that to start with is a really good sp uh, place to start with your drawing. Uh, we're going to start working on top of that now with pencils. So uh, everything so far we've uh, done with the, the two H pencil um, and we'll continue working with the 2H pencil uh, until that stops doing anything then we'll pick up the HB pencil um, and we'll We'll work through that until again that stops doing anything and then we'll pick up the 2b pencil and we'll work through the 2b pencil all the time just working up through the pencils we can go back through our pencils if we want some lighter areas and then obviously we can use the 4b pencil really putting push putting in the punchy blacks when we get there I'll just soften out these edges of fur there right so what I'm going to do now is put the blender down and pick up my 2H pencil again. And what I can start to do now is because I've got I've got some nice areas in, I'm confident that I can start to work on top of them. So what I can start to do now is, is add a little bit more tone in some of these areas now. I'm just starting at the top. We usually tend to sort of work from the top down because that way you're not working, you're not sponging what you've already done with your hand over the top of it 
And what we're trying to do here now, we're not we're not drawing so much, we're just shading. We're still not worried about because we're not worried about putting details in at the moment. What we're really looking for is some good tonal values. We get the tonal values right, and this will look like a three dimension when we stand back, because it's quite important, it's always important to stand back from your work. And when you stand back from it, if from a distance without any detail it looks like a lion, then when you put more detail in, it's only going to look more like a lion. If you start with the detail and you stand back and you've just got lions and no good tones in, you'll be surprised it won't look like it won't look that three dimensional and that much like a lion because your eye from a distance doesn't see all those lines you put in, it just sees the tonal ranges. And it can't put together it can't put it together as a lion. Or whatever it is that you're drawing. So always in always ensure that you stand back and you get the tonal the tones right first and then worry about the detail later. Okay, so still with 2H pencil, I'm just starting to go over, and you can see I'm not being too sort of, uh, I'm not being too worried about whether, you know, I'm exactly right. I'm just starting to put in a little bit of the, of the detail, but, but not, not a great amount of detail, just as a tonal value. And try and feel what you're doing, try and think of the shape of the animal, think of the shape of the lion, make sure that you're not drawing what you think should be there, but you're drawing what is there. So it's dark, you see we've got this dark area through here, which I need to put in. Okay, like I said, through here we're not we're not worried about being exactly right. We're just getting the tones in the right places. So when I'm ever I'm shading, I'm always trying to keep it at this forty-five degrees. I don't really want. I don't, don't want to go across or up and down because your eye tends to pick those up whereas if you go over 45 degrees it tends not to see them as if you get any lines on you, your eye won't pick them up easily okay so still just using this 2H pencil the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to go in like without putting any really dark areas in at the moment so I want to slowly build up these tones Because dark areas, they're not a completely black area. They've usually got lighter areas within the darker areas. So that's what this will do. We're putting in the lighter areas within the darker areas, if you like. Okay, so, so working our way through, come down, we can start putting a bit of turning around the eyes and, and a bit more detail. So we've got this darker area around the top of this eye. highlights his eyelashes go slightly okay so his eye quite small really most lion's eyes aren't that big you know, this darker area around it So again, just think about the tones and the shapes. I'm just going to leave his eye just like that for the moment. Then when I get this a little bit darker, we'll darken the actual eye. So put this in 
around here and we'll just do this bit that goes around the actual eyeball so this bit down here again just two edge pens so i'm not putting a lot of pressure on it i don't want to ingrain the pencil into the i'm not trying to get too dark with this we'll do that with some softer pencils like so i'm just trying to build up these areas subtly so that we're starting to get the tonal range in but without jumping in and making everything too dark at this moment so we get some just darken these eyes a little bit so that they help me okay so we've got a slightly darker area down the side of the nose here Put this area here so again i'm just i'm just sort of sketching it in i'm not i'm not trying to be too precise because these are just darker shadowy areas just like highlighting where these spots might be and then obviously this is quite a dark area on his nose try not to um Try and resist the temptation to hold the pencil down here. It's never a good idea to do that. You tend to put a lot of pressure on the on the paper and also restricts your movement. So always hold the pencil at least halfway down, I would say. That way it gives you a lot more freedom of movement. It might take a little bit of practice to get your control with it, but it will benefit you a lot in the long run. Okay, so we're just building up these areas here. So I'll just darken this around here a little bit. So this comes from there, around here. Now, when you've got all this tone in, and that's the first time you want to stand back, and look at your drawing from a distance and then you'll start to see whether your tones are sort of there or thereabouts because it'll jump out at you from a distance if you're wrong but you won't see it if you sat on top of it now I always encourage people to draw like I am upright on an easel I think there's a couple of reasons for that I'm looking straight at the image at the moment if I was drawing flat I'd be looking at it sort of like this and you can see let me just zoom out so you can see how the perspective change you know if I was drawing if I sat and I was looking at at that on a flat table I'd be looking at that you can see how the perspective changes so it's always better to draw flat out uh, sorry to draw uh, on an easel um, like I said that way your perspective is right you're looking straight at what you're doing you're not you're not trying to sort out what might already be a difficult sort of drawing perspective wise from the fact that you've added in another perspective which is the fact that you're looking at it on an angle so I think a drawing board is relatively cheap and you pick one up for a desk is all 20 quid um, and it'll make a massive difference in the long run to the way that you work so what I'm doing here is just I'm just put this darker area in around here like I said that this line that we put in originally is just the separation between this lighter area and this darker area so I'm just going to I've got the line there I'm just going to use it and then I'm going to put in for lose that I've got this darker area that comes down here still my 2H pencil I'm just working through my 2H pencil and there's a there's a there's a temptation at this point to go and get a softer pencil 
and jump in with that but try and resist that urge and just keep working with this pencil like I said until this pencil ceases to be of any use so this pencil is not going to get a lot darker than these points I'm putting in now it probably would if I held the pencil near the point and really bore down on the pencil but then you're going to get some indentations in the paper uh, and if you decide to change it you won't be able to erase them um, so I'm just putting a little bit see a few flare. I'm just adding a little bit of variation in the tone there so just be just slowly let it build up and you will come back to this pencil we'll go you'll go back and forward across your pencils so just bear with me it's not a race we're not trying to get this done quickly or anything we're just going to take as long as it takes and people ask me how long a drawing is going to take I never really tell them because I don't know it's going to, like I say it's going to take as long as it takes I, I don't like to work to deadlines if I can help it okay so just Okay, so I'm not going to put those spots in at the moment with this pencil. So just shading this through, you can see if I shade it through this way, it sort of follows what it's doing in his tongue here. Work around his tongue. Slightly darker area there. So here, try and resist the urge to draw lines. Like I said, we've just got these bits of tone that we're going to put in. Just try and follow what's on the photo tonally. And try and draw it in as lines if it's not a line. And like I said, there aren't many lines in in life anyway. Okay, right. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to make you watch me do all of this what I'll do I'll finish this part of the shading with this pencil and then I'll come back and we'll move up start to move up through the pencils okay so now I've uh, I've worked the two eight I've, I've worked a bit more tonal value in with the two H pencil all, the, all over you can see um, I pretty much um, Got about the same sort of the darkest tone is the darkest tone in all areas that's about as dark as you're going to get with the 2h pencil so before i move on again i'm just going to get my blender and just do a bit of work on what i've just done with the 2h pencil again just soften it a little bit try and pull it around make it do what I want it to do. Actually, there's no rush. Take your time. It's better to build up the terminal layers gently. Rather than rushing, I'm just bending a few of these out where they try and get a little bit more subtlety into it. 
all the time working away looking looking what's going on on your reference photo I apologize for that the phone ringing so I'm just quickly going to so I'm just going to work my way around again not not too concerned in detail just trying to get all these tonal areas looking about right and all the time looking at the photo looking at the direction that the fur is going in looking where the lighter areas are where the darker areas are there's no magic wand for this too just in case you're just working your way through it just finding it Right, the printer just decided it wants to join in there and have a little bit of something to say. Okay, so so there we go. I've got a bit of depth into this claw area now. But again, it's very subtle at this moment. Nothing dramatic going on. Right, so we've got to that point. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pick the camera up and move the camera away a bit, just so I mean, you can already see it better from the camera than you can when you sat close to it. But you can see, if I pick the camera up, you know, from a distance where you can't see the detail, it's still starting to look like a lion. Okay, we've got a way to go yet, but I think we're on the right track. Okay, so <clears throat> now we've uh, gone over with a blender and blended back in again. We can go back in with some, uh, we can work down the pencils, obviously it's H, B and 2B. Before I go back in with the H at the moment, I'm just going, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of the detail in around the eyes just so that we can work around that that quite dominant prominent area so the actual eye so I'm filling the darker area in around the eye I'm trying to keep the uh, don't lean on too heavy with the pencil, just keep it nice and light. So we're just working over areas that we've already worked over. So we just work that area in, or we'll just work this area in here. So now I've done that, I'm going to get my HB pencil. It's going to darken the actual eye. Now the reason I've done this is, as I said before, it's quite important, I think. Let it keep the eyes relatively dark. So that they <coughs> reflect the rest of it. I'm just going to now just hint where the actual pupil of the eye is. And it's not. And the same in the other one. I 
Okay, so that's just to give me a little bit of um, indication as to what's going to go on later on. Right then, so we're just going to carry on working our way through the, the tonal ranges. What we can start doing now with this one, just start increasing. And look what we're doing here, we're not going to go for a completely black area if you look. You probably can't see it so well on the camera, except in a great camera. But if you've got the photograph in front of you, you can see that there's a few variations in this uh, in this darker area. And obviously that's what you want to show so it doesn't just become sort of a black hole. And one way you do that is by building up the layer slowly, you can get, you don't just get a, a, a black area, you get this, you get some variation as you keep going over and over it. And again, we're holding the pencil at least halfway down. And we're trying to keep fairly free with it. So we are going to pre produce working this way at the end of the day is like a detailed sketch. Obviously, the longer you spend on it, the more time you spend on it, the more of a detailed drawing it gets. Um, so if I was working on this as a, as a piece of my usual art, something like this talking quite a few hours, well days really to complete, if you're going to do it to the level that I would usually work to. Obviously that's not practical for something like this and also you're not going to leap in and do that, what you're going to do is you're slowly going to build up to that. <clears throat> so just keep keep working your way through it, take your time. You'll see as you add more tone to it, you can work on top of the tones you've already got, which gives you some confidence. I lay some of those tones down a bit heavier. So just pay attention to how the gradual shifts in tone are. You know, the fact that this area here is lighter than this area, although we are going to pick this out with an eraser later. When it comes to putting these areas where the first starting to come into play, don't uh, worry about trying to re reproduce accurately every every uh, bit of the fur. Just look at the direction the fur is going in. Where the tones are, and then just just sketching your interpretation of that that way it'd look a lot more natural than you trying to follow exactly what the first doing so what are you trying to do again we're looking at tonal areas rather than details of the fur at this point so we're looking for where the darker areas are just putting some tone into those areas and as you do this, all this just keeps pulling the drawing together. It keeps adding a little bit more to it. So normally on a workshop, on a physical workshop, they'll run for um, four hours. So. You're sort of trying to recover this in four hours, um, but generally 
on a workshop I'll be most I'll be doing a quickish demonstration of what we're doing and then participants on the workshop will be drawing and then I'll be wandering around guiding them. I think it's better that if you're on the workshop you're drawing and I'm advising you rather than you don't want to spend time watching me draw. It's better if you're drawing and then I'm walking you through it as we go. So you get, I'll do each of the, each of the areas that we're covering now will be covered but obviously I won't spend so much time actually drawing them in. I'll use some prepared aids and do some drawing on the workshop but obviously the main aim is to get you drawing. So I try and spend as little time as possible actually drawing myself and as much time as I can with you drawing and with me constantly wandering around chatting to you about your drawing and giving you tips maybe just uh, you know helping you with it at times but generally the idea is that you draw. Like I said, um, I don't want you to spend your time watching me draw. I want you to be drawing and me to be helping you draw. So on a workshop, that's the way it would go. Um, you'll spend sort of, I would guess, another four hours. You're going to spend at least three and a half hours of that actually drawing. I try and really limit the, the amount of time you're not drawing so as short a period as possible. We've got the uh, HB pencil in our hand. We can start printing a few of the uh, few of the spots because this pencil's got enough depth to be able to do that. And again, just paying attention to roughly what the space in the spots is. I just drop those in there, not being too precise about them. And some of them aren't so much spots, they're just sort of a little mark. So. So what we're trying to do is just replicate that. But these are the little details that start to make it sing. And although at the moment we're not concentrating on detail as such, we can just start putting a few of these in. So we're not going to get too heavy here because this is, this is where our Tombow Mono Zero eraser is going to come in, so we're just going to put a bit more tone into that area. We're not going to go too heavy with it at the moment, though. A bit more tone in there. Okay, so we're working our way through. A bit more tone down in this area here. This is going to these areas now, the lines are disappearing and we're just being left with the tone and resist the urge to put the lines back in as such, but just keep it very sketchy and very loose. Like I said, there are no lines really. The lines are just the different borders between one tone and another. And now that we're establishing the tones, we don't need the lines. Because they've done their work. So, let me just put a little bit of an indication of what the fur's doing around here. We've got this 
darker area running up through here. Okay, got this dark area which is defining where that front pore is a little bit. You can always use the image, the other image, to see a little bit more detail as to what exactly is going on. So we're not worried about too much detail, but just in areas like this where it's a little bit sort of sketchy here, you can see here there's the pad of the pore. Um, so you can just gives you a better understanding of what you're drawing. Okay, this darker area across here. So this is fairly subtle just here around here but like I said we have got this darker area just here and then we got these dark patterns in the fur just around here those are running up there a little bit so what I tend to do here is I'll put these areas in here they're not particularly dark they're just creases in the fur and then I'll just I'll just add a bit more tone through there because we've got this darker area through here and that's just being creative with the tone like I said no lines we're not going to put a line there we're just going to increase the tone there to differentiate that So these areas here are quite broken as they, as they come around, no definition to them as such. We've got a slightly darker area just down here, look. So if we just put a bit of turn down there. Again what we're doing now is just using, it's just tone that we're using to differentiate. At this point we're not drawing lines, all the lines we got in earlier on and there shouldn't be any real need to be drawing lines at this stage so all we're doing is that we're just creating tone there so what I'm doing here is just dotting the pencil around a little bit just to give an indication of the broken fur okay so obviously I understand that you'll need a bit of practice with a lot of the techniques that we're doing here to get some, you know but it is just practice um, and you don't have to um, plow in and worry about getting the utmost level of detail it's your drawing you can decide how much detail you want to put in you can decide that you want it slightly smoother texture than I'm doing uh, you might prefer that style like I said it's this is a piece of art at the end of the day there's no rules I'm just trying to show you a technique to make sure you get the line proportionally right and that you get it tonally right I mean that does and once it's proportionally right and tonally right, the sort of finishes that you decide to put into it are obviously up to you. Um, put a bit there. Okay, so it's starting to come together. Right, I'm going to have a break now. Um, and then when I come back, we'll get on, start putting some softer pencils into there and really starting to create some of those uh, darker areas and really starting to define it okay okay so now um, 
we can start to uh, get in some uh, some deeper, darker colours. Not colours, sorry, tones. Black and white colours, what am I talking about? I'm still keeping it relatively light pressure. I don't want to indent into the paper too much. We're starting to work over the top of our lighter tones. And trying to get some more punchy um, tones into this now. And because we're working over the top of pencil and other tones, we can start to get some nice blends. We can start to look at all of the areas in here and then start to put a bit of detail into our toning. So as we work through this, as our tones get darker, we can start to then add detail to the tone a little bit. We've already established the, uh, the basic tones, we've already established sort of three-dimensional look to it. So what we're doing now is we're starting to put the detail in. I'm just going to work through this. As we have been all the way through, just slowly working our way through the drawing. Another thing about holding the pencil well down, like I am, is it keeps your hand away from your drawing. You know, if you're up here, you're right on top of your drawing a lot more. Down here, you don't cause so much smudging. And again, it helps you keep that lighter touch on the pencil. And a little bit of practice maybe, as I've said, for you to get to working like this. But if you can, I think you'll find it make a massive difference to how you approach your drawing. So just working my way through this. So it's just a case of slowly working away. Now you're not going to want to watch me, well maybe you would, I don't know, you're not, I didn't think you'd want to watch me painstakingly just pick my way through here. So what I will do is I'll, I'll move on a little bit and then you can, I'll pick, you can pick me back up or I'll get you back. I'll start filming again when uh, I'm a bit more through it. What I will do though before I do that is I'm just going to touch on the starting to use the mono eraser at this point because of what we're going to do now we're going to start as well as starting to put some dark highlights in we're also going to put some lighter highlights in so we've got our mono eraser And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, is with a knife, I'm just going to chop the end off the eraser, only about a millimetre or so. And the reason I've done that is so you've got a nice sharp edge all around the eraser so that gives so that gives you plenty of sharp edge to work with and when it goes blunt we just chop the end off again so what we're going to do with this now is like I said the whiskers tend to come always come from here and we're just going to put a few whiskers in we're just going to do it like a, a drawing pencil line and we're not going to worry too much about exactly following what the whiskers are doing we're just gonna okay any eraser debris you get just rub it off with your paintbrush now the reason I'm putting these in at this point
is because once you get onto the B pencils, it becomes a lot more difficult. You can see that's just starting to uh, lose the edge there. As you get onto the B pencils, it becomes a lot more difficult to easily erase. And by doing it to that point, because we've got a lot of the tone in, but then when we come down to this area here, what we can do, we can work around the, the eraser marks that we just created. So we can start to get some deeper tones in. But we're then not going to have to worry about trying to go back into it later with the eraser. And try and erase through that because trying to erase through the the B pencil, the harder pencil, can be quite difficult. As you can see, that starts to put because we're working between the eraser marks we just put on, starts to give us a little definition in there. And I always tend to do that. I always tend to get the basic tones in, then go in with your eraser. And then work around the eraser with your softer pencils. I'm just going back in over these, like where the folly, where the whiskers start. Okay, so hopefully <clears throat> there was uh, a bit of speeded up footage there to me. So I'm just going to pick it up now and just continue working with the pencil. With the pencil, you can. So what we're trying to do here is just get, like I said, that more detailed tone in. Start to get some deeper tones in. Like I said before, this is what we're really doing here. This is more of a sketch than a than a, a really detailed drawing. Uh, so I'm trying to work within a hopefully a time frame for you to, to do this. Um, I will be running this as a as a drawing workshop um, so you'll be able to physically come in have a go at this one if you want. So on the drawing workshop there'll be a four hour workshop um, obviously there'll be me to work with you through the drawing I think our tonal ranges aren't far off now. Really give some punchy darks uh, to the eyes, um, the ear, the nose, the mouth, these areas here. What I'm going to do first is we're just going to introduce a few highlights now before we really put those in. So what I'm going to do, I've just got my eraser. We're just going to pick up couple of areas and because we've got a light tone on it means that these areas will really start to stand out so what we're trying to do and we just break it into our the tone that we've put on and it's just giving those little highlights that will make all the difference. Okay, so just use your brush to get rid of any eraser marks. Just put a little bit more there. So, uh, okay, I'm just trying to, I'm just starting to really pick out some of the dark areas now with the 4B pencil. Just working my way through, uh, footage is a bit speeded up, um, but it's just a case of going over now and really starting to put detail and put the depth in, uh, really start to bring this drawing to life. Obviously, 
the more you put in from this stage, the more detailed it gets. You can you decide when you've got enough detail in, you decide when the drawing's finished. So uh, here's our finished drawing of all the grid lines are raised. Um, I think it really looks quite nice. Uh, I hope you do too. Obviously you can put more detail if you want uh, or not. Completely up to you. Uh, if you really enjoyed this video and you would like to buy the drawing kits that come along with it, uh, the reference material, the line paper um, or even the pencils as well, uh, all the details um, on my website. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, see you next time.